Patches from the frat house. We are back outside. Um, it was hot and then cold and then hot and then cold and now it's really hot. <laughs> and honestly, it just about two seconds ago started to sprinkle on me. There's enough humidity in the air. <laughs> it's just sporadically raining. Um, so I'm going to try to get this intro done quick and then I guess I'm going to have to relocate. Um, so business first. First of all, for those of you who have asked, where have you been? Um, we have survived May. <laughs> May and the beginning of June. Oh my goodness. So we had, oh, we Jack's birthday. My parents were here, so we had a surprise party for my dad's birthday. Um, the oldest frat boy graduated from high school, so we had graduation ceremony and all the other ancillary ceremonies and the graduation party. <laughs> And then my parents, uh, they come in, you know, May or June, we do Christmas with them with my grandparents, so we had that. So, and then just the end of the school year for everybody else. So we're kind of settling in. It's still, I still feel pretty darn frantic and chaotic, just the change, you know, having everybody home during the day. Um, so that is the first order of business. We're going to settle into the summer schedule here. Mm -hmm. We'll see how that goes. Um, secondly, for those of you who asked, where are you and we want to see more Liam? <laughs> Liam has officially hit the threes and oh my goodness, I thought he had an attitude during the end of his twos, but holy cow, he's very sweet, he's very cute, he's just a big ball of toddler emotion with no self-control whatsoever. <laughs> so, um, if you're local and you happen to be in Target or one of the local grocery stores and you hear a toddler losing his ever-loving mind, take a look around, it may be me with Liam. <laughs> So right now he is, um, everybody's been outside and everybody kind of went in to get a drink and a snack and he is sitting with a couple of his brothers having a snack so I thought I would record real quick. Which leads me to the third order of business. I know there have been several videos where Liam's been kind of toddling around and climbing around and making noise and I know that can be distracting and I apologize for that. I know several of you say that you don't mind whatsoever. I'm used to it um, and there are still days that he's very distracting to me and I'm used to it. So, for those of you who've asked if I could please record while he's napping, I would love to record while he's napping, and more than that, I would love if he would nap at all. <laughs> he's just getting to the age where he really, it's pretty rare for him to take a nap, and with so many kids coming and going, and work schedules, and a toddler running around, it is not always possible for me to record without the racket, and I apologize for the racket. Um, if, if I am finding it at all distracting during a video, I will trash the video and try again. So, that being said, if there aren't as many videos as usual, that's why. <laughs> because for the longest time I could record while he napped, because he took a nap every day at just about the same time, for about the same length of time, he had a pretty good schedule. Um, not, not so much now, he's growing out of that. It's not like I haven't been through this phase before with a ton of other kids, you know, I knew it was coming, but it's still it's still kind of a tough transition so I apologize for any of you who've had a hard time with the distraction of Liam you know in a video and for those of you who love seeing or hearing Liam in the video I apologize he's not here but he is having a snack so that I could record without him because he is just tap dancing all over my last nerve yesterday and today so this right here right now is a tiny break for me um, so during my tiny break um, I would like to show you guys as I'm sure several of you have already seen um, there is kind of a, a new size as far as a traveler's notebook style notebook goes. Um, if any of you have ever used a ringed planner that is, you know, personal size from Filofax, I believe it may be called compact size from Daytimer. I'm completely guessing on that one, so don't quote me on it. Um, it's, it's that size. It's roughly four inches wide by six inches high type of insert, or close to four by six, um, if not exactly. Um, the first place that I happened to see a personal size traveler's notebook, um, actually I saw the inserts before um, I had found the notebooks anywhere, um, DIY Fish does several different versions of personal size inserts and those that include um, a daily page, you know, a daily pages section and um, one that I found that also includes her weeklies, print booklet style. So you can either print them, cut them, and punch them for a ringed binder, or print them, fold them, and trim them to use in a traveler's notebook style format. 
Um, Marsha Bermucci also has some fantastic personal size inserts that also print booklet style. Um, and I have also found with a little bit of tinkering some of my existing inserts for a standard size traveler's notebook style notebook, um, a regular size Midori style traveler's notebook style notebook. If I print those at 80, 81, 82%, um, they can work as well. I, I like the ones that have been formatted specifically for personal size just because the margins um, tend to work a little better, but that's just a personal preference thing, that's just me. Um, so if you wanna fiddle around with anything you've got to see if you like that personal size, um, you know, if you print a, a standard size um, at 80, 81, 82%, you'll get darn close. Um, I really like personal size. Personal size has always been my comfort zone from way back, way, way back. Um, for the longest time I used, you know, your typical student planner, you know, like a eight by five and a half, eight and a half by five and a half style spiral bound, you know, I'm talking, I'm old, you guys, I'm talking way back. Um, but once they started using ring binders, a personal size was just always my comfort zone. Um, now, obviously be changing this because One Book July is coming and I already have what I'm going to use for One Book July. I've had that set in my mind for quite a while. Um, but I wanna show you um, how I have my personal size set up, the notebook I'm using. Um, if you get on Etsy and kind of tool around online, you can see, a, you can find a couple places that have personal size traveler's notebook style notebooks. Um, the one I'm going to show you is a, a personal size dark chocolate creme brulee um, from Jennifer Harvey at Chic Sparrow. Um, it's, one, it's a deluxe, it has pockets in it. Um, and FYI, if you're looking at them, if you compare the pocket style in her personal size notebooks versus the pocket style that's in a pocket size notebook from her or a narrow size notebook for, from her um, or a wide or an extra, those have um, like the card slot type of pockets. Her personal size is a secretarial pocket both on the front cover and the back cover, just so you're aware of that. That may change down the road, but right now that is what's available for pockets for those. Um, so I'm gonna put the links for everything down below. Ray Blake did a fantastic post showing his uh, personal size. I believe it's an all-American notebook from Chic Sparrow. I can't remember, I, it may be a maple sugar. Don't quote me on the color. I do know it's an all-American and it is a personal size. Um, he did a great blog post on that at uh, My Life All in One Place, link down there. Um, and he also has a great graphic right at the top of the blog post showing a comparison of all the different sizes, you know, um, A6, A5, you know, a pocket or a field note size, a personal size, a narrow size. <laughs> I like, Ray does these fantastic graphics. I love it. I get so excited when I see he's done them because they're, uh, they explain things so much clearer than I ever could. So I will put all the links for the inserts that I have personally found down below. I'm sure there are more. Um, one notebook I even fiddled with for a little while was just a moleskine, a moleskine cahier that I cut down um, to be the proper size. So that's, you know, that's all, always an option too. Um, if you guys have seen any other places uh, that stock personal size notebooks, the leather covers themselves, um, throw them down in the comments so everybody else can see too. I, like I said, it's been so chaotic. I haven't taken a ton of time to really dig through Etsy and whatnot and find a ton of them. Um, between recording this and posting it, if I do find some more in that size, I will put them in the links down below. Let's do it that way. Um, just because it's getting ready to, I know you can see sunlight, but there's a big dark cloud and I think I'm gonna get rained on again. So um, I'm gonna get the body of this filmed and if I find anything else before this goes live, I will put them down below in the links and I'll include them in the blog post as well, okay? You guys take it easy. I, I hope it is slightly cooler where you are than it is here because I am very warm. And as you can see, I glow in the dark. I am not made for heat, you guys. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> so you guys take it easy. I hope you're doing well. And uh, keep your eyes peeled. There'll be some One Book July info coming soon. Okay? Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Okay, guys. So here is a peek at how I right now have set up uh, my personal size uh, traveler's notebook style notebook. Um, like I said, this is a dark chocolate creme brulee and personal size from Chic Sparrow. Um, and I will look uh, before I post this for uh, some other stores. I just haven't made the time to do it. I also recorded a what's on my phone video and I need to find the links for every single app I showed you guys and that is taking forever. <laughs> so <laughs> that's why I haven't dug around. That's part of why I haven't dug around for more um, places to find this size. Um, I love this size. This size is perfect for having enough space to work in, yet being small enough to be able to haul around without it taking up too much space in my bag. Um, this is, I'll show you what I have inside. I have 
I did get the one with the pockets. Okay, so there's secretarial pocket in the front, secretarial pocket in the back, pen loop, and then the other pen that I've been using a lot lately, I just have clipped to um, a binder clip. Okay, and that's another one of those binder clips from Shiogami Crafts. If you guys uh, didn't see that and you want to see more of those, I have a like a stationary favorites video that posted a little while ago that those are those are included in. Um, my folders, I just got um, file folders from the dollar spot at Target. I don't know, I'm on a pink kick again lately, so I just cut them down to size to wrap around and I'm using them as covers. And I didn't follow any particular pattern, you guys. I, I cut them to the right size, left three inches on the bottom where I could fold it up. I honestly super glued this seam right here. Yeah, I know. And uh, I got a pocket. That's all there is to it. The fold holds it there and the center fold is the center, the what would be the bottom fold on the actual file folder. So, I am very hazy in the head, you guys. I am so hot. Um, in the front pocket here, I just have some, I've been using these post-it flags a lot lately, so I just took a larger um, Project Life card and folded it in half and just stuck those in there because I'm finding for the summer, and you'll see why I'm finding I'm using those. And then I just have some scratch paper up here, and that's all that's in there. Same thing in the back, I have another one. This was card stock just holding post-it notes. Just I just throw a couple of each kind on there that I, I'm you know using a lot lately and stick them in there and then fold it in half to cover it and then some more scratch paper back there. And then this pocket insert here is, or was, one of the standard size Midori card holders. So it had, you know, there's a pocket here, a pocket here. There is usually, I can't remember, I think I trimmed it off this end. There is usually a third pocket down here, a double-sided to hold on both sides. And I cut it down to fit in here. It was the one that Mike had in his planner and he wasn't using it anymore because his new notebook, he got uh, the Mr. Darcy notebook from Chic Sparrow um, in black with the pockets. So because all the cards he had in there, he's now keeping in the pockets that are up front, he wasn't using this anymore. So I committed sacrilege. I cut one row of pockets off of it and it wraps perfectly around all of the notebooks. Now, if I don't put it around all of them, if I just put it, I had originally just stuck it around the first one, it sticks out way too far. So when you close it, just because of the width of the, the standard size, it sticks out over here and it drove me crazy. So if I tuck it in behind all of what I have in here, it sits flush with the edges no problem. Doesn't stick out at all, doesn't interfere with the pens. So my first, oh and there are four elastics in the spine. As you can see, Three holes means four elastics. So on my first elastic, I have monthly calendars from Marsha Bermucci on Etsy. Um, this is January through December of 2015. So these are just basically forward planning. Um, I can show you what that kind of looks like filled in. I don't put a ton of stuff on here. Um, you know, and it doesn't matter what size I'm in. I usually have monthly calendars in it just for forward planning. So, you know, repetitive stuff that the kids have going on, like a school schedule, I don't write that in here. If there's no school, I do write it in. Um, hockey schedule during the hockey season gets written on there, so I know if Mike is home or away. Um, and then there is June so far, and all I've been doing is clipping this onto here, except I had it the other way around. And that holds my second pen because I have been using a second pen a lot lately. Okay, so that is the first insert. It's just my monthly calendars. Pocket in the back with more post-its. And my second one is what I'm using on a daily basis. Um, this I will come back to in just a second. These, I have to get the right version for you guys. And I did not look that up before I started. And now I'm kicking myself. These are from DIY Fish. Um, they generally come... Ignore this little tipped in page here. It is a week on two pages with a weekly chart. I want to say, I'm gonna guess and I'm gonna be wrong. So I'm not going to say what version it is. I will put it down in the links below, okay? Because I wanna say it's like version five, set three, but I may have that wrong. So don't quote me on that. Um, so this works fine for me during the summer. It is, you know, I don't get as much done during the day as far as my stuff is concerned, just because the kids are home and we're playing outside and running around. Um, but here is what, like, here's what last week looked like. So you guys know by now, I know I've said it a million times, I live off of my weekly chart. This weekly chart is just not big enough just for the way I use it. If I used it differently, it would probably be fine. But 
for my purposes and the way I'm used to using it and the way my brain works, this isn't quite big enough. The days are plenty big. I can get a schedule in there. I can get to-dos in there. No problem. So what I've been doing, I'm taking a Python programming class right now. So each week's lectures, assignments, quizzes, all that good stuff, I break everything down for whatever's we just for that class. That's what I'm using this chart for, okay? And then I have tipped in the weekly chart from another DIY fish set that I already had. I just printed them out, trimmed them off, and I honestly, I should have trimmed these off closer on this edge. I kind of kicked myself after I did it, but it'll be fine. And then I just place it next to this edge, washi it down on both sides, and I've got a larger weekly chart for the week. This is a lot like what I had going last year when I first went to ringless planning. Um, when I first tried uh, the Midori as a planner kind of experiment, this is very similar. That was uh, a week on a page over here. This page was for notes, and then I had tipped in a weekly chart either on this side or on this side. So it's very similar to that. I do like the larger things per day because if I do start running out of room, because I've tipped this in, the back of this is completely blank. So if I need more room than, than what I have over here, I can write over here. Plus I have things like projects and whatnot broken down um, you know, further back in other notebooks, like, so it's not that big a deal to, to have room. So I've got plenty of room so far. Um, I have, so that's my weekly. It does come with the monthly as well, and it's your typical, you know, DIY fish monthly chart on one side, calendar on the other side. So the way I'm using this is this is just typical calendar. So because I have those forward planning calendars up here toward the end of June here, I'll go to July's, but it won't be in this book. It'll be in my smaller book for one book July bring forward anything that's important off of those forward planning calendars into the current month's calendar. Bills over here, those are also, those I bring from my financial planning inserts um, that I showed you guys. Those are from Plan Inc. on Etsy. Um, I have all that broken down by month. So anything that's due on a certain day, I copy down in here. This I'm using for the list of videos and posts I wanna get done for the month because that way I'm not always back and forth into the project notebook for one thing because I'll get back there and I'll look for one video to do and I'll see like eight that I want to do and that completely kills my productivity. So I kind of decide, okay, here are the ones I definitely want to get done this month and I put them up here, okay? So, and then the other thing I can use the back of that weekly tip in for is the grocery list. So I did reformat my pre-printed grocery list a little bit, just washi tape it on there and then highlight what I need, write in anything that's kind of like not normal stuff that, you know, that we do need. So that's how I used that blank space last week. So that is the DIY Fish week on two pages. I'll put the proper version down below so you guys can see that. And just know that it does not, that particular version does not come with this weekly chart. Okay, I added this weekly chart in from a file that I already had. This is just her typical weekly chart. Okay? Love these so far. Like I said, personal size is my comfort zone. So, and here is how I'm using those those page flags that I showed you for forward planning stuff. Like here, Clayton has Key Club at 1030 every Tuesday. So I, next Tuesday, I will, like Monday night probably, I'll write it in and I'll just move this forward to the following week just in case there's a week that he has something else going on and he's not going. I haven't already written it in. So I don't have to worry about whether I'm going to take him or whether Dakota can run him. I can just move the post-it and be done with it. So... Then the next one is, this is all project pages. Now this insert, I should have shown you guys a blank one. Um, I love these inserts. These are the inserts from Chic Sparrow. Um, very nice paper. Um, it's a little bit textured, a little bit of a texture to it. It's really, really cool. And if you're seeing texture on there, that's because I have the umbrella up on the, the deck table and you're seeing the mesh shadow. Um, but it's really nice textured paper. Um, they're available in plain, lined, or grid. Um, so if you're looking for inserts in a personal size that are already done, and they're really decently priced. Um, and that's it, there's not gonna be any, as far as you know, Jennifer's told me right now at least, she just wants to stick to plain, lined, and grid. So. Um, these are just project pages. So I have like just a running list of stuff that needs to be done this summer with a little check mark on there. So I know that that's where the running list is. Um, videos that are coming up, Evernote series posts that are coming up, what's your why not posts that are coming up. See, I haven't forgotten about this guys. Life just kind of started to eat up my time. Um, tech coding, current batches, and then I've got a bunch of blank space in the back. So that's all that is, is projects. Okay, and then the last one I honestly haven't added anything into yet. I may take it back out if I end up not using it. It's another plain insert from Chic Sparrow. Um, 
I don't know, I may leave it in there and I may not, I haven't been using it yet, um, but earlier today I was kind of wishing that I had it, so <laughs> I had left it on my desk and I was outside, so I may leave that in there yet. So that is it, you guys. It's, it holds about a four by six insert, roughly, um, and the ones that I cut down smaller, as you can kind of see, the DIY fish ones don't stick out quite as much. I cut them down purposely that way because I knew I was going to be putting this pen in there and I didn't want it constantly rubbing on the edges of the inserts. So I purposely cut those slightly narrower. And I just remembered something that I didn't tell you guys. Um, this, I'm going to do a separate video on this, but you guys have already seen a hundred times the yearly chart. Um, several people have asked if I use it and how I use it. I definitely use a yearly chart. I have used a yearly something of some sort for years. I know this probably looks like a bunch of chaos that makes no sense. I assure you to my crazy brain it makes sense. I'm going to do a separate video on this, but that I just have washied into the cover of my, my weekly inserts. So toward the end of the week usually, um, or while I'm setting up the upcoming week, I'll go through and fill in what I need to fill in real quickly on here. And it's just a real quick way for me to look and see what was going on with the boys, what was going on with my time, if Mike was home or away for hockey, um, if they were days that we had games, any work I did for clients, it's all color coded. I try to keep the writing to a minimum. Um, if I have numbers circled up here, those are that's a day that I finished a book. So like this day, this was the third book I finished of the year and I just write down here what book it was. So I'll give you guys a, a better overview of that in a separate video. So that is it, you guys. Um, if you have liked, you know, a personal size or you know, compact size. Um, I believe it's called compact from Daytimer. I might be wrong on that. <clears throat> like I said, very hazy humidity brain today. Um, but if <clears throat> that four by six size has kind of been a comfort zone for you, look into this. It is a really, really handy size to haul around. I have enough space to see what I need, but it's not overwhelming, if that makes any sense. So if you have questions, let me know. Um, I'm gonna do some poking around and see um, what, what all I can find online for different places that you can get a personal size notebook and um, more inserts as well. Like I said, I'm sticking to um, the blank and the gridded inserts from Chic Sparrow and then the personal size inserts from Marsha Bermucci and personal size inserts from DIY Fish. That's what's in there. But I'll poke around a little bit and see what I can find. Okay, guys, I hope you're all doing well. I hope you're not nearly as warm and sweaty as I am. <laughs> and I will talk to you soon, okay? Thanks so much.